Shalom brothers and sisters and welcome to our Sabbath day sacrament service. Uh, I'm here with brother Kyle. He says hello and uh, we're, we're at brother Kyle's home today in Claycross. Just around the corner from mine. So I'm going to ask brother Kyle to start off with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask Thee to be with us this day. We ask that Thee will be blessed, and also all our brothers and sisters will be blessed on this special day. I ask in the name of our Lord and Saviour that there will be peace in this world in these very uncertain times. I ask Thee, Lord, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless you all and keep you safe and well. Amen. Amen, and I, I thank you for that, and the Holy Spirit is with us now. And uh, I wanted to share a bit of my journey, uh, my journey to find Christ and to have my faith. And I've been to many churches, um, um, many times of fellowship with different churches. Uh, one day I want to share about a dream I had. Uh, one night I had a dream, I was on a bicycle on a hot summer's day and I was riding along and I looked up to the sky and I could see a pyramid and on that pyramid I could see steps and people were going up and down the steps and at the top of that I could see a throne with one person sitting on the throne and somebody sitting by the side of him. So, I had keys in my hands all of a sudden and uh, I didn't understand why I had these keys. But I guess, and I've since had my dream foretold <coughs> that it was a dream that I was heading towards going the right path to God and that God would give me all the things I need, all the people and all the, all the books and all the, all the power I need to come to him. So I, I guess that God puts people in your way to help you uh, get to know him more and to help you in your faith, so I'm thankful for that. Kyle would like to share something with you now about the Sabbath. Brothers and sisters, you all know by now the reason we have this Sabbath is in honour of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and the Last Supper he had when he passed the bread and wine. This is a thing, this is a thing essential for us as Christians and followers of Christ. By taking the Sabbath, we partake of that holy sacrament. It is important to us because it fortifies us and it keeps us and to let us know that we are keeping his commandments, which we do do. And that is the reason it's very important to us to keep the Sabbath day and to take the Sabbath blessings. Because the Saviour himself, when he sat down with his apostles, he said to one, one of you at this table who will dip your bread with me will betray me. And one turned round and said, it's not me. But the Saviour said, just looking at that person, you have said that out of your own mouth. So, according to the Tanakh or the Holy Bible, the Saviour knew that this day would come when he would be sacrificed and offer up his life for our sins so that we may find eternal happiness. I say this in his most sacred name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carl. So as we come to do the prayers for the sacrament, I hope you've got your emblems prepared and that you can join in with us on this, the sacrament day, which we take each week to remind us of our covenants of baptism and to remind us that Jesus the Christ died for us. So, uh, 
I'll do the bread first, okay? So if you'd like to bow your heads with us. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. As we come to say the prayer for the bread, I would like, if you can, to kneel or bow, whichever is okay for you, so that we can say this prayer. It comes from Doctrine and Covenant 17.22, and this is for the bread. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the soul of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of Thy body of Thy Son, and witness unto Thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of Thy Son, and always remember Him and keep his commandments, which he has given them, that they may always have the Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. So as we pause and remember the things that Christ Jesus did for us. So I ask you, brothers and sisters, now if you'd like to bow or kneel again as we say or as Kyle will say the prayer for the wine O God the eternal Father we ask thee in the name of thy son Jesus Christ to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy son which was shed for them in the members which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Sabbath message, I want to talk to you guys about love. I know that... It's something I harp on quite a bit. I get complaints about it all the time, honestly. I, you know, I'm some sort of love guru, or we, everyone's got to love each other, but we're an ecumenical movement, so it kind of makes sense that that would be a big focus of my ministry, the ministry the Lord has called me to. So why do I talk so much about love? Why don't I talk about you working harder to perfect yourself? Well, one thing that's interesting I grew up in a church that was very works-based, but we were always told that it was the combination of works and grace. But then it didn't really make sense because it was very, very works-focused. You had to do these certain things or you weren't good enough. And if you did them, you probably still weren't good enough. But somewhere in the eternities, you would become good enough. And it, it's kind of like trying to throw pebbles into a river so you can cross the, the stream. You can throw pebbles in there forever, but it's a lot faster just to accept the grace of Jesus Christ and move forward in that grace. So why do I harp on love? Well, because I genuinely believe that these works that people talk about, if you have that love, you can't help but do those works. So I want to share one of my favorite scriptures with you, and I've shared it before. This is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. You have heard that it has been said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. 
But I say unto you, love your enemy, bless those that curse you, bless those that hate you, and pray for those that despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. And then I'm going to skip ahead and it's the end where it says, be perfect even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So this is a very interesting concept. If we want to be perfect, we have to love our enemies. Why? Because if we love our enemies, we're loving our neighbors. You can't love your enemies and not love your family, right? If you have so much love that you're even loving those that persecute you, you can't help but have that Christ-like love for the whole world, for the whole creation, for everything. And this is backed up in the commandment that the Lord gave the apostles at the Last Supper. He says in John 15, 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And how did he love them? He died on the cross. That's how he loved all of us. That's the kind of love that the Lord wants us to have. And so I want you to understand that love is a work. Love is an action. And so if you want to believe in a works-based theology, if you focus on this idea of love, then you're going to do all of those works that you believe. You're, you're going to be throwing those rocks in the river. But I'm going to let you in a little secret. Because you accepted the grace of Jesus Christ, you can throw those rocks in all day long. He's going to pick you up and he's going to walk across the water with you in his arms. We are going to grow because we're trying to deepen our relationship with God because we have that love. It's a natural consequence. We can't go out and pay tithing, just write a check to somebody, and think that we are doing a work that is going to deepen our relationship. It's the other way around. If you want to write a check to help the poor, you do it because you love the Lord and you love your neighbors. And so because of that, you're not just fulfilling a commitment. I've got to give this church this much money. No, you're listening to the Lord to tell you, this is where my money needs to go. Because it's not mine, it's God's. And it doesn't belong to a church. It doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to an organization. If you have a million dollars, yeah, any church would love to have 10% of that. But if the Lord tells you, go give that to that homeless person over there, that's what you do. Because it's not about building up organizations. It's about deepening your personal relationship with God. Imagine, okay, so I'm, I'm married. I love my wife very, very much. Let's say that she, what she wants for Christmas, you know, it's December, it's getting close to Christmas, is not a gift for herself, but a gift for someone else. But instead, I go, and, and it's a specific person in need. But instead, I take her money and I buy her a present. She, what's she going to do? I guess she could return it to the store and then give that money to the person that is in need. What if I take that money and I give it to another family member, not the person that she requested to? Am I giving her the Christmas gift that she wants? No, because she was very specific. I want you to take the money you were going to spend on me and give it to this person. That's what tithing is. And I'm just using this as one example. And, and the reason why is because a lot of churches just push this idea of give us money, give us money, give us money. And so it's an easy one to grab a hold of. And in the fellowship, time is a tithe. If, if you are spending time helping out the fellowship, that's tithing. Whatever the Lord tells you to do with your money, that's between you and God. Yeah, we have bills to pay. But at the end of the day, we would like to build a temple. And if the Lord tells you to put money towards that, that's awesome. But if the Lord tells you to do something else with it and you do that, that's even better. Because you can't deepen your personal relationship with the Lord by following the whims of an organization or meeting the needs of an organization. Unless God tells you specifically that that's what he, the Lord, wants you to do. And the only way we can know this is by building that love. 
Another scripture I really like a lot, 1 John 4, verses 8 and 12. You can read 8 through 12 on your own. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. If we love one another, God dwells in us. And I would say that's the Holy Spirit. And his love is perfected in us. We are made perfect by God's love. So I, I want you to understand, when I'm talking about love, I'm not just talking about this feeling in your heart. One of the things I I, I, I guess I'll say I, I talk about, I complain about, is this idea that if we do certain things, we feel like we've done enough. I know people who, they buy the bumper sticker to whatever, you know, cure cancer, whatever it is, and they put that bumper sticker on their car, and that's it, they're done. Congratulations, you bought a $5 bumper sticker and put it in your car. That's not curing cancer. Can you volunteer time in a hospital? Do you have money that you can give to the people, the scientists doing the research? Are you asking God in prayer for assistance? And, and I'm going to tell you, prayer alone is not enough. It, it is great. Prayer is pushing positive energy and directing positive focus towards something in need. And in that sense, it is an action, but it is incomplete if we do not do more. There's a Pope who said, first you pray for those that are hungry. Then you go feed them. That's how prayer works. Why? Because first we pray so that those that are hungry know where to go to get the food and to help make sure that the Lord blesses us with the resources we need to feed them, the strength that we need to feed them, the time that we need to feed them. But there's a cause and effect. We are the Lord's hands. And it's that love of God in us that moves us forward to do the works. If all we do is hope and pray, we are slothful servants. But if we love, then we do more than merely hope and pray. We have hope. We do pray. And we also act. That action is the key to true love in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So by all means, get that bumper sticker, put it on your car, and also pray to the Lord. Ask him, should some of this money that is my tithe go towards which particular institution that needs it to help bless the lives of whatever it is, whatever, whatever issue it is that you feel drawn to helping with? So brothers and sisters, once again, my message to you is this. Go out and love a little more. Talk to those people that you're afraid to talk to. Talk to those people that you haven't talked to in a long time. Let them know that they are loved. Spread the Lord's message, not by sharing scripture references. I mean, you can, but by being there for people. By loving them, not merely as a thought, but as an action. That's my message this Sabbath, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So that concludes our sacrament for today. And I hope you have a blessed week. And we just, uh, we had our prayer event on Wednesday and, and prayed, uh, well, we prayed for Carl to join, but he, he was, he couldn't get through to us, so we're going to have to work on how we, how we link up to that page, so. And we prayed for peace in our world. We prayed about our scriptures, and we prayed that we can get more people watching the videos. So, let us pray for all these things this week. As we say goodbye to you now, and we'll see you next Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Shalom. Shalom, brothers and sisters.